In this video, we're going to continue what we've done here in the recent videos, looking at dollar-weighted, also known as money-weighted, and time-weighted rates of return. Here we're thinking about problem 5.2.5, which is a pretty practical situation that would occur when you've got a money manager thinking about investing for you in shares of a stock, for example, based on unit values or value per share. We'll be finding those uh, different rates of return and comparing them uh, when we're given unit values for the investment and the investment amounts over a year. Okay, so it is a pretty practical situation. The computations are not difficult, but I think it's good to do this and review these concepts yet once more. So we've got this fund, call it Fund X, that has unit values, value per unit or value per share if we prefer, of 1.0 on January 1st, 2015 at the beginning of the year. We're going to be thinking about one full year here. 0.8 halfway through the year on July 1st. And then 1.0 on January 1st, 2016, one year after the start. So it goes down in value over the first half of the year and then back up in value to the starting value per unit or per share by the end of the year. A fund manager receives contributions from an investor of 100000 at the beginning and also 100000 halfway through the year immediately takes those contributions and purchases units in FundEx. Find, and I'm going to also say compare, the time-weighted and dollar-weighted rates of return for 2015. Again, dollar-weighted is often called money-weighted, too. All right. Now, before we go ahead and find these things in the way that we've talked about recently, it's pretty simple calculations, let's think intuitively about what's going on here. We said time-weighted. Uh, only depends on really the growth factors, okay? Not on the actual amount invested. So you think about the values per unit or per share. It starts out at 1.0, goes down to 0.8, going down in value by 20%. Then going back up to 1.0 by the end of the year, going back up by 25% to a value that's the same as what it started at. That should be, if you think about it, a 0% return for the time-weighted rate of return, okay? That should be 0%. We will, again, confirm it by thinking about those growth factors, but just realize intuitively that should be 0%. What about the dollar-weighted rate of return? Again, also known as money-weighted. Will that be negative, zero, or positive? Is it clear? Well, 100000 is invested at the beginning. We are thinking about the actual contributions here. It goes down in value to 80000 by the middle of the year, but then you purchase more of the fund units, the fund shares, based on a lower price. You're buying low, and ultimately, by the end of the year, sort of selling high. And you've also got more shares when, during that second half of the year, the fund was doing well. So probably, based on that, you know, that's, this is dollar-weighted. We've got more money in there in the second half of the year, and that's when it grows in value. Probably the dollar-weighted rate of return will be positive. And that's, that will be the case, and it's a pretty significant difference. So it helps you just understand how to think about these things and compare them. Let's now be a little bit more careful and just double-check these intuitive observations with actual calculations. Got a number line here. I think it might be helpful. It's not absolutely necessary, but I think it might be helpful to uh, do more than just show the values here, but also show the contribution amounts and maybe the number of units both purchased and owned at different times. So I could maybe put the, uh, the contribution amounts down here. Contribution amounts. Put the number of units above that both purchased and owned, and then maybe the value of the investment up at the top, okay? Again, not that you have to do this, but I think just conceptually speaking, just to make things clear in your mind, it might be nice to do this, and you may want to pause the video right now and try this on your own before you see what I do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. So initially at time zero, you have a contribution amount that is this 100000 dollars, say. I'll write it as 100k, k standing for 1,000. Since the unit values are 1.0, that means each unit, each share costs $1. So if you've got $100,000 that you contributed, 
that means you bought 100,000 units. 100K for 100,000 units. And the value is 1.0 per unit. That's going to be, since you have 100,000 units, a value also of 100,000. So we have 300,000 things there. Okay, but at time point five, they're going to be different. At time point five, the money received is 100,000. So that's still 100,000, but the price per unit is lower. It's 0.8 per unit, so you can buy more of them. How many can you buy? Take 100,000, do it as 100, divide by 0.8, you're going to be able to buy 125,000 units. So you take your old number of units, add on 125,000 new units that you've purchased, and the new number of units that you now own is 225,000. What are the values of those units? Well, the first $100,000 of values of units during the first half of the year went down by 20%. Since the unit prices went down from 1.0 to 0.8, this $100,000 investment went down in value to 80,000, 0.8 times 100. How about the value of the next one, this 125 units? Well, they cost 0.8. Okay, per unit, 125,000 times 0.8 is 100. Same as the contribution amount. So this next 125,000 units has a value of 100,000. Same as the contribution amount. For a total value of 180,000. Now at the end, you still have the 225,000 units. Uh, they have gone up in value by another 25% from 0.8 per unit to 1 per, per unit. So to find the total uh, monetary value here at the end, you can think of it two ways. Since it's 1.0 per unit, you can just take this 225 times 1.0 and say the answer is 225. You also could take the 180 and multiply by 1.25 if you want extra confirmation. 180 times 1.25 gives you, once again, 225,000. Okay? So I think it's good to be flexible and realizing you can think about these things in various kinds of ways and confirm that you get the same thing if you're feeling unsure about it. All right, now let's be a bit more formal about these different rates of return. The time-weighted rate of return, based on what we talked about the last three or four videos, focuses on looking at the growth factors and multiplying them and then subtracting one to get the actual rate of return. Uh, focus on the values here. Um, the 100,000 goes down in value to 80,000, so right before that next contribution in value of 100,000, we've gone down to 80,000. 80 divided by 100, or 0.8, would be the growth factor for the first half year. It's going down in value. You could also call it a decay factor if you like. Then we have 180,000 right after that deposit, so to speak, that grows to 225,000. So we get 225 over 180. 225 divided by 180 based on what we've just done should be 1.25, and it is. We said the time weighted rate of return should be zero, right? We said that at the beginning of the video. 1.25 times 0.8 is indeed one. Subtract one from that and you get zero. Just like we said at the beginning of the video, thinking about it intuitively by the fact that the ending value per unit or per share is the same as the beginning value. The time weighted rate of return is 0%. The dollar weighted should be positive. There we think about the actual investment amounts. And in a sense, the higher amount halfway through the year gets more weight when the fund does well, it grows in value. So it does make sense to call this a dollar or money weighted rate of return, whereas this one, it doesn't make a ton of sense to call it a time weighted rate of return. You got the initial contribution amount, 100,000. That sits in there for the entire year, so I multiply it by one plus i, where i is going to be the dollar rated rate of return for the whole year. Again, once again, I emphasize that when doing 
dollar rated rate of return for a year. We are thinking in terms of simple interest to keep it as simple as possible. You've got the next contribution of 100,000 that stays in there just for a half year, so it gets multiplied by one plus one half i. And this has to equal the final value at the end, 225,000. These are in thousands. Now solve for i. 100 plus 100 is 200. 100i plus 50i is 150i. Subtract 200 from both sides. 150i will equal 25. So i will be 25 over 150, which is 1 sixth, which as a percent is about 16.67% approximately. Okay, so there is the dollar weighted or money weighted rate of return. And as we talked about, it is positive. So Thinking about this money manager, how should you evaluate them? Probably, and, and I've read that this is mostly what's done, they're more evaluated on the time rate of return because they can't help what the what the investor does as far as when they make contributions and when they make withdrawals. And so the time rate of return, rate of return doesn't take those dollar amounts into account. It just looks at the growth factors instead. That's the more common way to view how the investment manager did. But you know, you could the investment manager could still say at least for this fund here that we did still get growth, and the growth was about sixteen point six seven percent as an annual kind of growth rate.